Future time, everybody. Put your little antennas up. Let's try to connect our brains together because in today's video, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna be predicting the future. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. We have been kind of in this sort of sort of holding pattern lately, trying to figure out what is the next big thing that is gonna be coming to Galaxy of Heroes. What we're going to do today is kind of go back a little bit, look at a lot of indications on what is coming in the future, because lately I've been getting a lot of questions from people who like to try to prepare in advance a little bit, and they've been asking me, Arnold, what should I be doing? Because we're trying to see what's coming in the future. So I'm going to tell you guys right now what my strategy is to try to make sure I'm staying up to date on what is happening right now. But at the same time, you can also prepare for the future a little bit with the, with that interest with preparing for now. Now, a few things before we get started. First off, this is mostly my speculation, but I think it's reasonable speculation that might be helpful for a lot of you guys. And if not, it's going to be helpful for at least what you're doing right now in the game. And secondly, there's going to be a Road Ahead blog post sometime soon. Uh, someone asked Crumb the other day, and the Reddit, when is the Road Ahead blog post coming? And they said nine days ago that it's probably going to happen within the next week or two. So I'm hoping we're going to get the next Road Ahead blog post because July starts the new fiscal quarter for uh, Capital Games or EA at large. And we're going to be probably seeing some more details soon. But in the meantime, there is so much that happened in the game recently that's going to bound to connect us to the future somehow. So let me show you what I've been doing and give you kind of some reasons to believe that something big is probably going to be happening in the next three months here. First two things we got to talk about is the, the metas because Darth Revan has been meta since March of 2019 and of course Malik came out about a month later a couple weeks afterwards and as you see Darth Revan has been killing it 87% of the meta Jedi Knight Revan 7% of the meta so then you got Padme Amidala owning 2% and then our droids right here my boys with droids well we got about 2% combined between IG88 and HK47 just kind of holding on the bottom for people trying to have some fun and then secondly probably the most obvious thing that's uh, gonna be changing it has to be changing since January 2019 ships has just gone straight stale and it's all about uh, all about home one and the Millennium Falcon and obviously Obviously, we kind of see that the negotiator will eventually start being unlocked by some of the top guilds in the game and it's kind of obvious at that point that probably the uh the, the negotiator is going to try st starting to break this up so we'll talk a bit about that let's go back to the road ahead blog post for april 10th 2019 now here is where they basically kind of made their statement saying that we're going to be giving a lot of love to the Clone Wars era content. And as they kind of talk about right here, this is gonna be kind of the main focus for a little bit, not every single release as they're saying up until episode nine will be from this era. But if I had to guess, episode nine is gonna be in the third fiscal quarter, which is probably, what is that? October to uh, December or something like that. And so I'm thinking this next road ahead blog post that we're gonna be seeing outlining what's gonna be happening in July, August and September is probably going to be focusing more on light side Clone Wars content and some other things as I'm going to uh, indicate soon. So what the first thing I kind of want to bring up is that there's going to be some more characters bound to be added soon. We're still waiting on first off these new characters that they announced a while ago that they're or they said they're going to be releasing new characters tied to the separatist might new currency that they released so this currency they said is going to unlock new characters that they're not ready to announce just yet and we still haven't heard what those new characters are going to be the negotiator is its own thing but we still are waiting for what are these other new characters that they're going to be adding to the game they actually came out to talk about ships in particular because the fleet has been the ships have been has been the neglected child of galaxy of heroes so they had to come out and talk about it so i'm thinking the negotiator has to be to some extent a meta defining ship and so what i've been doing lately because the one thing we know for sure is going to happen is people are going to eventually unlock kenobi's negotiator and the thing that seems obvious to have at the negotiator is to have a lot of galactic republic ships ready and this is going to tie into a couple of points we're going to make so i know you're going to say oh gosh i hate ships i'm, I'm going to skip this part this part is kind of important because it's going to tie into some character stuff we're going to talk about soon. The thing you should be having soon, a, 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 as fast as possible, is going to be Anakin Skywalker ship. It's been in the game for a long time now. It's been in here since about, I don't know, I think uh, uh, November or something like that. So I got it to seven stars about a couple weeks ago. This is, seems like it's going to be one of those um, one of those important ships for the negotiation. What I've been doing overall is trying to go through and level up a lot of these Galactic Republic characters that I've kind of been um, you know undermining for a long time. Ahsoka Tano, she got a minor rework recently. She's great with Padme Amidala, Anakin's rework, and Kenobi's rework. No-brainer to kind of gear up because soon we're going to have light side territory battles 
for Geonosis. We're going to talk about that in a few seconds here. But again, this is a no-brainer. Even if you don't like ships, gear up the character because this character is going to be important for the future of whatever new events are coming and potentially meta shifts in the future. And the same thing with the clones. We're seeing that Shock T added a lot of new viability to clones. Are they Geonosian level? No, but gearing up the clones is going to be a great thing for several reasons. One, because of the negotiator capital ship. That's the, that's the main thing I'm bringing right here because that is something we can all predict is going to be important. So gearing up your clones, one, is going to help you out with that. And Shock T will soon become free to play accessible. She was just thrown into the Chromium packs recently. So even if clones don't get a rework, Shock T, which is a great character, turns the clones into a usable faction but this is where we're going to start speculating a little bit the speculation i have here is that the clones are going to get similar love to how uh the genosins uh, genosins were genosins got the brute alpha and for a few weeks they were just good they didn't have reworks or anything like that but eventually once the rest of the genosins got reworks that the faction got really really good and what does that sound like that sounds like the clone troopers right here shakti great character brought a lot of new viability to the faction even when they're unreworked there's a lot of stuff you can do with them but they're probably going to get reworked soon within these next three months and that is going to be important for having another team for grand arena and also for light side territory battles for geonosis and so just in general gearing up these characters is going to be logical for the ships if you want to use the negotiator one day and secondly i think there's going to be a nesting doll as they love to say to the clone troopers moving forward so again another thing that i've been trying to focus on is just focusing on gearing up these clones because they're useful with shock t and their ships are going to be important for the galactic republic and the negotiator kind of seems like a no-brainer and also i kind of talked about this a while ago i've been also gearing up some other characters uh for their ships because i'm thinking i want to have as many galactic republic ships as possible for general kenobi's release so plo Koon, not an amazing character at all not good at all for the most part he's got some very minor uses in the game but he has a very good ship and the reason why i'm gearing up plo Koon right now is because again light side territory battles is around the corner so even uh, not even talking about the ship which is the most obvious reason to gear up plo Koon for his ship and the, and the negotiator plo Koon, as we saw on the forum post they're going to be uh, adding a lot of new characters from the clone wars era and they're going to be reworking a lot of the characters from the Clone Wars era that are already in the game that are pretty bad. And Plo Koon, we talked about this, he's an iconic character from the Clone Wars era, and he's almost garbage. <laughs> so even if you don't want to believe the speculation that light side Clone Wars content is going to get love, just thinking about the Negotiator, if you're someone that's going to eventually get the Negotiator sometime in the future, that th having more geared up Galactic Republic ships are going to be the way to make sure you're getting the most out of the Negotiator, which is bound to be some sort of meta-defining thing. So that's kind of the, the first thing I want to put out that's the most obvious thing, the, and it's all tying to the Negotiator but also it's also going to tie just to the future of light side territory battles we don't know exactly when it's coming around but we can kind of go back in history a little bit when uh hoth territory battles came out we had the light side version come out and that came out in late august beginning of september and then about uh two three months later i believe in december late november early december then we got dark side territory battles for hoth so i would think we're going to get the same exact type of thing for the uh, Clone Wars era, you're going to get that dark side territory battle first and probably within two to three months, we'll get the next thing. And what fits in two to three months? This fiscal quarter. So probably sometime this fiscal quarter, we're going to see a lot of new things added for the light side uh, Clone Wars content because the Separatists, they've gotten a ton of love. Basically, every single one of these characters are useful and they got a rework. The only one that's kind of left out is Asajj Ventress. I'm surprised she didn't get any sort of minor Separatist rework to have any uh, sort of synergy with at least Count Dooku. Luckily, she has the tag, which allows her to be used for a lot of theory crafting potential. But overall, she's really the, 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 the I guess, the one that was just overlooked. But overall, every single one of these Separatists are so so good and i'm thinking within these next three months we're probably going to see a ton of stuff so with similar love towards this galactic republic faction and we already talked about some of that plo Koon probably and we also got other things like mace windu if mace rework uh, doesn't get if mace doesn't get a rework in the next few months or at least this year I, th I this is a waste of an opportunity for clone wars content kind of like how we have the negotiator for dark side territory battles the developers have been playing around with the words benevolence and negotiator uh for quite a while now and they've been really hinting and teasing at the fact that we're probably going to be getting some sort of grievous capital ship 
in the future. So that's why I'm recommending, if you want to be prepared for whenever Light Side Genos of Territory Bows is coming, which it is coming, when it is coming, who knows, but you want to try to get ready for that. So that, one, you get ready for the whatever is going to be the big rewards attached to it, two, Probably going to be getting the, uh, the the capital ship for Grievous. And three, this is where we're really going to be stretching here. I'm thinking some sort of meta shift is going to be happening in the next few months. Uh, because usually after uh, a month or two after the, a big character was released, Darth Revan. Darth Revan's event just came back out about a couple weeks ago. Usually within a month or two, they shift the meta. We saw that with Jedi Knight Revan. When his event came back around for the second time, about a month afterwards, Darth Revan came out and it kind of shifted the meta. So be prepared for a meta shift. So that's why I've been kind of saying gear up some of these Galactic Republic characters. And also, you probably want to gear up some Separatist characters. Let's talk about this before we talk about a meta shift. This is where it's obvious. You don't need to speculate about the Separatist faction. Their day is here, people. They're so important for Separatist might and they have a lot of other great things grievous is the number one jedi knight revan counter aside from darth revan himself so you're gonna have a great team for grander in the championships to just smack Dar uh, jedi revan in the face so this is a faction where it's pretty obvious to put a lot of work in and the first thing to really think about is the genos and brood alpha a lot of people are chasing after genosians right now free to play character people are still farming this guy and it's gonna be a team that's gonna have a lot of viability in the future for Grand Arena Championships, we've seen how great the Genosians are. And also Separatist Might, they're needed everywhere. Literally everywhere, these guys are needed for. And this is going to tie into what I said a second ago. There's probably going to be another capital ship like the developers have been teasing. A, probably a Separatist capital ship to kind of have this negotiator versus whatever Grievous is going to have. We're, we're predicting malevolence probably since they've been playing with the words benevolence. So you want to have these guys geared up not just for Separatist Might, not just for Grand Arena Championships not for all the other things in the game but also when you're gearing up characters like let's say Sunfac, Genosian Soldier and Genosian Spy what do they have? They have a ship attached to them so when you're building up these characters you're also preparing yourself for getting ready for ships because the problem is that the Separatist ships right now we're needing a lot more before we have a Separatist fleet or a Separatist capital ship such as General Grievous so you're kind of getting so many bangs for your buck by gearing up these important factions right now so what I recommend doing is if you're not worrying about catching up on Jedi Knight Revan, Darth Revan, all those other important things that you have to have before you move forward or you just like to prepare for the future in general, gearing up a lot of these Separatists is kind of a no-brainer and especially General Grievous, the more geared he is up and also the more Zetas he have, the more powerful his potential ship will be as well. And the last big thing, this is the thing that everyone wants to know about and honestly I wish I can give you guys a straight answer but we it's hard to kind of see where things are going. The one thing with the older public content is that when Basilisk, Sean and the crew came out we're like oh yeah a Revan's coming sometime soon so people are able to prepare and advance to that and then also when we started getting the dark side older public stuff, Basilisk, Sean, Fallen and whatnot, we started seeing hints of HK47 reworks and we're like okay we're gonna probably get a Darth Revan soon. People were able to prepare in advance. And the problem is this year, we've only had two or three-ish marquee events. We had the, or we had three. We had, uh, we had the Droidica, B1 Battle Droid, and we had Shock T. Beyond that, it's kind of hard to see where things are going. There's no marquee events being laid for us to understand where the future is heading for Galaxy of Heroes. So this is kind of where the speculation gets really hard to pinpoint. But all I can really kind of predict is that because when you look at that meta report, seeing how dominant Revan has been, and he's probably going to be dominant for another month or two, we're bound to see probably some sort of meta shifting character or team. And the two teams that are at the brink of becoming very meta are these two teams right here. Padme Amidala will ignore Clone Wars, Chewbacca, and Barriss for the moment, and General Grievous. These two teams are really good. Honestly, they're starting to become a lot better than Jedi Knight Revan in general. Jedi Knight Revan is one of the better, more consistent ways of beating Darth Revan, but overall, General Grievous and Padme Amidala, they're kind of at Jedi Knight Revan's level uh, to an extent of some sort, but what they really need is one or two new characters added to their team, and that could shift the meta and take Darth Revan as well as Malik out a little bit. I don't think they're going to completely wipe him out, but I think there's bound to be some sort of shift. Is it a new marquee character? Is it going to be a legendary? There's so many, or journey event, hard to say, but I'm thinking in the next three months, keep your eyes peeled. I know there's a lot of KOTOR fans out there, and it's been KOTOR meta since the release of Darth Treya, Darth Treya, Bass, LaShawn, Jedi Knight Riven, Darth Riven, Darth Malik. It's been a KOTOR meta for over a year straight now. However, this game is not a galaxy of KOTOR. It's bound to change soon, and I'm thinking with Clone Wars being the focus probably for the next couple months and the release of Season 7 of the Clone Wars TV show. Not yet confirmed when it's happening this year, but I'm guessing sometime this fall. It seems obvious there's probably going to be 
a meta shift. We're going to probably see a meta shift in the fleet arena, probably roll out, revolving around Negotiator and maybe Grievous's capital ship in the future. And when you're looking at these guys right here, we're so close to what could be a Clone Wars era meta. Oh my gosh, I would die if we finally had a, clone, uh, a Galactic Republic versus Separatist meta in arena. We haven't had that yet, but that would be so epic if we did. Kind of like how you have your dark side KOTOR versus light side KOTOR meta right now. Let me know what you guys are doing down below. This is a big conversation right now. We're going to hopefully get a road ahead blog post sometime this week, but let us know down in the comments. What are you doing to prepare for the future? Or do you have a good idea as to what might be coming? Hopefully this video was helpful to try to get your mind jog uh, jogging a little bit. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Comment down below on all your thoughts and be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And I will talk to all of you lovely people in the very next wow. video. Peace out, everyone. Yeah. Party Richter, party Richter. Yeah, down, 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 down. Party Richter, party Richter. Son of a bitch. Party Richter, party Richter. Yeah, down, down, down.